Hello, we're meeting again today, not to talk about small arms, but rather about this AMX-30 Pluton, which was one of the French Army's nuclear delivery vehicles during the Cold War. But before I get into the story of this AMX-30 Pluton, I'd like to thank the Musée des Blindés for welcoming me and allowing me to film. So don't hesitate to pay them a visit and discover their rich collection if you're near Saumur. And always a big thank you to my tippers who enable me to continue my work so don't hesitate to join them if you can. To understand the raison d'etre of such a weapon, let's go back in time to the end of the Second World War. After the war, General de Gaulle wanted France to have nuclear weapons, and on October 18, 1945, he created the Commissariat à l'énergie atomique, Atomic Energy Commission, to resume nuclear research with a view to its application in all fields, from energy to defense. On February 13, 1960, France became a nuclear power with the detonation of the first French nuclear bomb, Gerboise Bleu. But even before the test of Gerboise Bleu, the French army wanted tactical nuclear missiles, and in 1958, France acquired eight batteries of Honest John missiles. Obviously, given their name, these are American missiles. These missiles are only a provisional measure until we have a French nuclear delivery system because the Honest Johns, although operated by French soldiers, are under Washington's responsibility within NATO. In 1963, the French Army General Staff issued a call for tenders for a short-range missile capable of reaching a target some 60 kilometers away. The Nord Aviation and Sud Aviation companies were asked to respond to this call for tenders, but given the complexity of the development, the Direction Ministérielle de l'Armement, the forerunner of the Direction Générale de l'Armement, asked the two design offices to pool their work to develop the missile. In the end, the requested range was changed to 100 kilometers so that the launcher would be out of reach of enemy artillery. The missile's initial test in 1970 covered a distance of 120 kilometers at a speed of 1,100 meters per second, Mark 3.2. Propulsion is provided by a solid propellant engine. For the vehicle, we chose the chassis of the latest AMX-30, and for the first prototypes, we took an AMX-30 tank, removed the turret, and installed the container with the missile without worrying about ergonomics or access for the crew, who had to crawl under the launcher and could no longer access the escape hatch because of the extra equipment. These early prototypes were not the most stable and tended to tip over due to the rather high center of gravity. After a number of iterations, the AMX-30 chassis was chosen in its recovery version, and in 1972, production of the first AMX Pluton began, with deliveries starting in 1974. In all, there were five Pluton regiments stationed at Belfort, Sweepers, Miley, Leon, and Oberhofen. These formations were made up of a command and service battery, three firing batteries with two missile launchers each, and a nuclear security and transport battery responsible for guarding the nuclear depot associated with each regiment. Before discussing the doctrine behind the use of the Pluton, let's take a look at the technical characteristics of the vehicle and its missile. The AMX-30 Pluton weighs 38 tons and is 7.5 meters long and just over 3 meters wide. It can travel at a speed of around 60 kilometers per hour. In addition to the conventional AMX-30 engine, there is an auxiliary engine to supply power to the various equipment without having to start the vehicle's own engine. To this chassis we add the container weighing 1.3 tons and its missile which weighs 2.4 tons and is 7.7 .7 meters long. This missile therefore has a maximum range of 120 kilometers and a minimum range of 17 kilometers with an accuracy of between 200 and 400 meters depending on the distance. It is made up of three parts, the delivery system, the warhead and the core which determines the yield but I'll come back to this in a moment. The missile is then loaded onto the launcher using this hydraulic crane attached directly to the vehicle. In terms of power, the missile could carry two types of AN-51 nuclear warhead with a yield of 15 or 25 kilotons. And by way of comparison, the bomb used on Hiroshima was around 12 to 15 kilotons. 
Setup takes around 45 minutes plus a further 10 minutes to prepare for firing. To carry out a launch, we need the authorization of the President of the Republic, followed by an automated transmission chain to the Pluton. In the vehicle, we have radios to liaise with command, as well as pointing devices, including a goniometer and various computers, to correctly orientate the missile. Once in the air, guidance is provided by an inertial guidance unit inside the missile. The initial Pluton doctrine was not necessarily the clearest. These missiles were considered tactical weapons to be used in the event of Soviet invasion of German territory. The use of these tactical nuclear missiles was seen as a means of countering the Soviet Union's large armored army, and given the positioning of the AMX Plutons, it was only possible to strike on West German territory. Finally, this doctrine was changed in the 80s under the presidency of François Mitterrand, and these weapons were transformed from tactical to pre-strategic weapons. In other words, in the event of threats against French territory, the Pluton missile was the last warning before the use of much more powerful strategic missiles. These AMX Plutons were to be replaced in the 70s because in 1977, the Ministry of Defense wanted missiles with greater range and studies began to develop the Super Pluton, but these studies were halted for a new project, the Hades. The Hades has missiles with an even greater range, around 500 kilometers, and with a greater yield of around 80 kilotons. The Hades is also more accurate than the Pluton, with a terminal accuracy of around 100 meters. The Hades consists of a truck and a so-called TEL for tractor erector launcher, which carries two missiles. The first test of the Hades took place on November 22, 1988, and the system was due to enter service in 1992. I say due to enter service because between 1988 and 1992, the geopolitics of the world will change, with, of course, the collapse of the Soviet Union. Thus, on September 11, 1991, the early retirement of the Plutons was announced, and in May 1992, the Hades program was shut down. The AMX-30 Pluton and its successor, Hades, were the Army's nuclear deterrent vectors, and these weapons complemented the rest of the French deterrent force, comprising the French Navy's ballistic missile submarines, the Albion Plateau ballistic missiles, and the Mirage 4, capable of carrying the AN-11 atomic bomb. Today, this deterrent force relies solely on aircrafts and submarines, in any case, I hope this video has enabled you to discover this AMX-30 Pluton, and as usual, I invite you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and if you like, I also invite you to join the TP in the description. On that note, see you soon for another video.